up you guys welcome back to another video so today's video is going to be my final ownership review of the c43 amg i've put about 41,400 miles on this car and i drive it to work i drive it to the grocery store this is my daily driver combined with my fun car and it is a really fun car. So I'm gonna be sharing my experiences with owning the C43 with you guys, in case if you guys are in the market for a C43 or if you're just curious about the C43 in general. All right, so let me give you guys some background information. I've had the C43 for over three and a half years now, and with three and a half years comes with a lot of experience. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the daily drivability. Yes, it's a two-door car, but two extra people can fit in the back seats. The only problem is if they're over six feet tall, then they're gonna feel a little bit cramped. But other than that, I just use those two back seats for emergencies. The driver's seat and the passenger seat is really, really comfortable. I've taken this car on long road trips. And by long, I mean like eight hours of driving. I used to commute from Pennsylvania to Massachusetts all the time and I would leave the car in comfort mode and I would get here on one tank of gas and that's about, I wanna say it's about 470 miles. So yeah, that's good. The all wheel drive system that this car has really makes a difference if you're looking for a daily driver because it's safer in the snow. Yeah, I wanna tour and put on for the soil. Hey, bruh, remember yes, you still have to have snow tires or winter tires in the winter, that's a no brainer but some people think that if you have all wheel drive, then you don't need any specific tire, which is just completely wrong. It doesn't matter if you have all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. If you don't have the proper tires when it's snowing, you're gonna slip no matter what. So if you're worried about daily drivability, don't be, because the C43 is the ultimate daily driver in my opinion. Well, the ultimate daily driver for the price. You're getting a great exhaust sound, you're getting all wheel drive, and this thing is pretty quick, stock. I tuned my car after about 10,000 miles of just keeping it stock. That means I've had this car tuned for over 30,000 miles and I've had no problems whatsoever. I don't care what anybody says, a stage one tune on this car really, really makes a big difference. And the power is pretty reliable too. You don't really lose power at any time in the RPM range, even when the car was stock. The next thing I want to talk about is how fun this car actually is. And you really have to thank the AMG Performance Exhaust System and the rear wheel bias of this car. Hey, we got some popo. Who cares? A lot of people think that you can't drift this car but you really can, easily. Obviously, you can drift it and do donuts in the snow. You can do that with pretty much any car. zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds with the perfect launch. My tuned C43 from 2018 can do zero to 60 miles per hour in 3.9. I have yet to figure out the 100 to 200 kilometer per hour time in this car, but I definitely will do that soon, as soon as there's not a lot of traffic in front of me. Because I'm pretty curious too. I have never checked out my 100 to 200 kilometer per hour time, but I really wanna know. Well, I know all people are different. Some people don't like 4Matic systems, so if you really want to get a feel for the car, go out and test drive one. 
All right, so I actually want to start off with the service and like the maintenance fees and stuff. And typically for services, they're actually not that bad, even at the Mercedes dealership. For like a 10,000 mile, 20,000 mile services, it's gonna be about 300 to 400 dollars. I can't remember exactly what I paid, but I think that was around 300. 40, 350 bucks, except for the 40,000 mile service. I got my 40,000 mile service at Mercedes dealership and it was about $800. But that's okay because the 40,000 mile service is usually the biggest and most expensive service. But the 20,000 mile and 10,000 mile services, those are like half the price of that at around like 300 to $400. Maintenance and service wise, it's actually not that bad at all. So that's just for the service and stuff. For the tires, over these three and a half years of driving this car, I've gone through two winter tires and two summer tires. So for my summer tires and for any tire that you wanna buy, buy them online. Don't buy them through a dealership unless if they have like a discount to give you. I bought my Michelin Pilot Sport tires for about a thousand dollars. And then the brakes. I've replaced these brakes out of these three and a half years only twice. Twice only. Not even kidding. The first time I got all my brakes replaced was at a Mercedes dealership and they charged me around $600 for the parts and for the labor. So overall, for the tires, for the brakes, and for all the oil changes and the services that this car needs, I can't really do math in my head, so I'm gonna leave it right over here. And that's what I paid for over three and a half years of ownership. For the most part, these cars are pretty damn well built and you don't really have anything to worry about if you treat the car well. The power delivery of this car is very, very linear. Like you don't feel like you're losing power at all throughout any of the RPM range, even when the car was stock. And that's why this car was so fun to drive when it was stock because you never lost power and it sounded really good. Jump for the shit, I'll tap when I speak, I'll cap with the speech till they caught up in the rapture. I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break, been a long day. Hit your line with your fall through with the light sticks. Maybe help me spark the ideas. We got nowhere else to go. It's only up from there.